Good afternoon. Uh, today's topic is on stress. And seated by me is Dr. Joshi and Dr. Sachin. To Joshi, can you tell me more about stress? What is it? Yes, stress is a new word in medical dictionary. Stress is actually a physics word which got translated into our everyday life and now we see it even in medical dictionary as stress. Stress is a perception with, uh, within our mind telling, oh, we have these things to be done. This is not done yet. And when am I going to finish it? It is mostly, mostly like a to-do list that we create on ourselves, which has got physical and physiological response within our body. We no longer see stress as something external. It is actually within our perception, the mind. The mind creates the flight or the fight response based on what input we get through all our senses. Now staying in a red light zone and saying, I am getting late, is the same perception seeing a tiger in front of you, but it happens to be a red light and your physiological response is going to be a fight or a flight. You see that, oh, I'm going to get late. And by that, you're setting up a trigger of physiological internal response like secreting your adrenaline, increasing your blood pressure, increasing your blood sugar, and an agitation which increases your heart rate and overall neurological uh, response associated to all these chemical changes that goes within our body. So you're saying how people react to stress in mind and body and the effects of stress. That's so right. You know, it does affect your mind, your physical body, and your overall sense of well-being. Yes, stress does cause increase in your cortisol level, which is a small gland in the adrenal which releases this cortisol and which causes increase in your blood pressure, your blood sugar, and your heart rate, and gives you a sense of urgency to do the things before you know, it gets to you. That is how the cortisol response occurs when you see a stressful situation. How does one identify stress? That's a good question. Um, people, as a private practicing physician, people come to me saying, oh, I just don't feel good, you know. Then delve into them more. Oh, I do eat my food, but I don't feel satisfied. I sleep, but I don't feel rested. And uh, I do my work, but there is no sense of satisfaction, and I feel exhausted all the time. These are some of the symptoms, physiological symptoms, manifesting because of stress. And what we need to do is understand that we are stressed, and because of that, you're f feeling all these things. My blood sugar is on the higher side in spite of taking my medication. My blood pressure is high in spite of taking my blood pressure medication. Now, why is this? You know, it is actually your stress response. In spite of you taking medication, mm -hmm. it still overrides and your system produces these things to keep that flight response intact. How does one relieve stress? Approaching stress is multifactorial. It is not one thing that will help you the most. It's like approaching in multidisciplinary way. You start with what triggers the problem. And you see it's something that to do with at home or at work or it's within yourself. You know, everything is perfect, but still you perceive, you know, it is not perfect. Um, I can talk in terms of medical ways of giving treatment for your stress. Say for example, you say, I am very tired and I'm not able to sleep properly in spite of me going to bed. Then I can prescribe some medication to help you sleep. That is a part or an aspect of it. Uh, but then there are other things that needs to be addressed, the psychosocial aspect of it. And how do you address that? Um, Dr. Joshi, I know um, children. I see children get stressed. I take care of a child and I see what can this what can you do for it like for instance for a child 
what can they do? How can they, you help a child to relieve their stress? These days, children are stressed because as parents, we overload them with things rather than to enjoy what they are given. And we stress our stress on them that they feel, yes, we have to do this, otherwise we are not doing right. We are partly responsible for their stress. Instead of allowing them to play, pursue what they are interested in, we set our ideas and opinions on them that makes them stressed out and gives them a sense of failure. And that is where they start developing the stress. Instead of saying, let me get up, I fell, let me get up and play. It says, oh my God, you didn't do it right. You know, and a sense of inadequacy and a failure comes into their mind and that upsets them quite a bit, even though they are not able to express it very well. I think to relieve the stress is to do something that makes them happy. If they are in a place and situation that they feel very uncomfortable, but they have to do because my livelihood is there till I make the change. Yes, we are all faced with situations like that, that we say, oh, I have to do this, but I really don't want to do this. So how do you make best use of that given situation is what we need to look into. I have to work Monday through Friday, 8 to 8. And what do I have to do in that time frame that I'll be less stressed when doing this? There may be taking a break for 15 minutes and saying, okay, I'm going to do some walking. I'm going to read something that is going to lighten me up. And a 15 minute break is not a lot when compared to what you're going to spend for what you are doing. Dr. Joshi, I know in this day and age we have medicine for everything. Is there anything else that one can do to relieve, med uh, to relieve stress? Yes, medication is there. It is a part of the solution. It is not the complete solution. Medication takes care of the acute need, but it is not a long-term solution. Long-term solution is approaching holistically, addressing every issue that creates the stress. Medicine is a part. The other parts are like alternative treatment in terms of practicing yoga, breathing techniques, and how to calm oneself when they are given a stressed situation in addition to medication or without medication. It will be the approach. Jean. Uh, can you shed some light on this, please? Yes. Actually, the area where we live, Silicon Valley, is a haven of stress. So, Mary, everybody is stressed. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you really think, I stopped asking people, I don't even ask them if they are stressed. I ask them how much. Oh. Now, I know a lady who passes out of stress. So, uh, how can, what can we do to help us? See, there are a lot of things uh, we can think of from the holistic perspective to manage the stress. As already uh, Dr. Zoshi have explained, um, many ways, uh, or many kind of modalities we can think of to answer and remedy it out. But it's very individualistic. It's more like you have a mentorship and then through that mentorship you start making changes, you reflect on yourself, okay. and then you are able to modify. I will tell you one very simple story that can give you more insight. <laughs> <laughs> so the man went to the God, okay, and he said, God, I have everything, um, but I like one thing, I like patience. Ah. So he said, God, give me the patience now. What are the common ways to relieve this So now, as, as Dr. Zoshi was saying, in general, stress is not considered as a bad thing. <laughs> so now you might that's say different. that's interesting. Very. Right? So usually the stress has uh, three components. So one is called as distress or the bad kind of stress. Yes. One is the eustress 
So that is the yeah. better kind of stress. So now the eustress actually helps us to do a lot of things which in normal course we may not be able to achieve or do or perform. And the distress is a opposite side which actually breaks us down. So now you will say uh, one example probably mm -hmm. can clarify what it is. Right. So suppose you are standing in a street and you see a car coming at you with a roaring high speed. You run. You run. <laughs> so that is the you stress. That's how you save yourself. You perform because right. all the hormones, what they come up, they okay. actually come for your rescue, for betterment. That's how you can survive. Okay. The opposite, if you decide the car is coming and then what can I do? Your history. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so one more thing um, I can elaborate on is uh, you consider stress as a spice. So now you will say what spice has to do with stress, right? Yes. So think of the spice when you add on your food, it makes food tasty, right? Yes. But if you add too much amount of spice, can you eat that food? Mm, no. 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 Same way if you don't add spice, it's very bland food. Very. So if you add the right amount of spice, it becomes kind of a good seasoning. Too good sometimes. So that's what <laughs> the simple remedy from the yogic perspective or Ayurvedic perspective is how can we learn to connect with ourselves, and then how can we learn to balance ourselves? how can we learn to control our mind, how can we learn to control our body and then same time using that knowledge and skill to perform better in any given situation. There are a lot of things we can think of doing. Um, usually uh, the change in attitude is very crucial. So yes. my grandfather used to say, you rather than work for happiness, you learn to work in happiness. Mm. So the shift, okay. that makes a lot of transformation for us. So now you will say, oh, the attitude change is easy, a lot of people have tried it before. Yes. But we are very stubborn inside. Change is not that easy. Mm -hmm. Um, I will narrate one simple story, very hilarious, <laughs> <laughs> on how difficult it is to change. But if the determination can surely make you change right away. That can be very difficult. So what happened is uh, there was a bear walking in the forest and he caught a man. And um, he was excited, he was ready to eat him for lunch. And the uh, man said, if there is any supreme energy in the universe, please come to my rescue. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing happened. So he said it from his heart and said, if there is any energy, whatever it is, I'm ready to surrender. Please come and rescue me. So suddenly everything froze and um, uh, he heard the sound and saying, there is some supreme divine it can come to your rescue. But you are intelligent, right? So use your intellect to ask for one offering and save your life. And everything came back. Uh -huh. So the man thought about it and he laughed and he said, well, I, I figured it out. So he, he said, hey, whatever energy you are, I say, um, make this bear pious. Uh -huh. So the next thing, the bear lifted his palm up to the sky and he looked <laughs> in the sky and he said, God bless my food. Oh. So taking it symbolically, right. if you look at it, right. you can see you go back mm -hmm. to the same square one again and again. So breaking that cycle of where you break even coming back, mm -hmm. going back to your own core freedom of who you are, that makes the difference. That can be very difficult. Now another interesting fact is when everybody of us, they want to make change, but most of the times, you know what happens, Mary? Uh, people usually 
always label it that they want to do it tomorrow. Yes. Like you said, right? Yes. Yesterday when we met. Yes. So, <laughs> so there was a lady and then she was old and then her days were over. So the God of death came to take her life. And then she was sitting there and she kind of ignored him. So mm -hmm. he got annoyed and he said, why you are ignoring? And he, she said, look, I am done with my life, but I have to fulfill two things, two wishes of mine. So what are those two wishes? So she said, I need to pay some money back to somebody I owe them. So I cannot die and with debts mm -hmm. because I, go, I don't know. And then the second she said, I have some longing on some food. I need to eat something. <laughs> <laughs> so if I fulfill those two wishes of mine, I'm ready to go. So he said, she said, I have money. I have the grocery to cook the food I like. So the God said, okay, I can give you 24 hours in my capacity to do uh -huh. that. So when you want me to come. So she said, come tomorrow at 9 a.m. and pick me up same time. So he said, this is Kali Yuga. how can I believe you? Uh -huh. People are no more the same. So she said, it's very simple. We make a contract, we write down, we both sign. Signatures are very important, you see. So they both wrote on the thing, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I come, pick you up. Okay. So next morning he comes, she's doing her chores, she don't pay any attention to him. And he said, now what? Because I gave you grace time, uh, ready to come. And she said, read the contract. You, you were supposed to come tomorrow at 9 a.m. <laughs> so Mary, oh. you had to remember to put the date. I like so that So the today one. and the now, that's what yoga says. So once we get into that attitude of getting in touch with ourselves, and then we remain in the moment. I was just going to say, we you are have to, stress free. We have to live in the now. You were asking me about the tools and techniques. Mm -hmm. So there are so many um, variety of tools and techniques available nowadays. Uh, so one can be use their own voice and breath and meditate. Uh -huh. uh, that's what I prefer as an individual because it's very, very beneficial. It doesn't require any other external resources. Yes. But same time, when you do the breathing and the uh, breathing techniques and the relaxation mm -hmm. techniques, it's very important you create some nice ambience around you. You can use water fountain, you can use some incense, you can use some mm -hmm. candles, you can have some nice colors, you can have some nice uh, inviting structure, calming figures, aromatherapy uh -huh. oils, a lot of fragrances, uh, just to create the environment. Once you create the right environment for you, some soothing music is very, very helpful because music, Nada Yoga, has a lot of power in healing. Because you hear a mm -hmm. lot of sounds like the bird or the water fountain, waterfalls, right. the birds chime, and then suddenly you kind of enjoy, you forget yourself, right? Absolutely. So now, our... Uh, Relating to what Dr. Jayashri was saying, mm -hmm. we can also relate it with the holistic perspective. Now everybody of us want to control our mind, right? To, oh, yes. to do the meditation, also learn to kind of have good control over our body and mind. Absolutely. So what you can do is you learn two basic things, which are very simple, logic, common sense. It's you cannot really control your mind because you can't see it. No. Same way, you cannot control your heartbeat or other functions, mm -hmm. but if you control your breath, it automatically ah. responds to that. So when you kind of learn to control your breath with yes. certain special techniques and breathing ratios, mm 